been about a month since my last deep dive into the IndyCar silly season in a video, so I feel it's high time to do another one as there have been several changes uh, where drivers, teams, and cars may be for next year, and it's warranted to talk about those things in more depth. Now, this video won't be nearly as in-depth as the previous video, as I don't want to repeat a bunch of information that was in that video. So if you want information on teams like, for example, Penske and what their full-time aspirations are going to be, be sure to check out the first IndyCar Silly Season video to get a broader sense of where all of the teams are going because really this video is going to focus mainly on the seats that are open for next year on a full-time basis. Now that being said, I will start this video by giving you guys some nuggets, talking about some smaller teams or uh, smaller programs with some larger teams for next year. These would be things that would not be on a full-time basis and we will talk about them in greater detail when I uh, do a follow-up video to the Indy 500 entry list. Now, I had mentioned before in the Indy 500 entry list video, but I'll mention it here just in case you missed that video, uh, that apparently there's a potential partnership with uh, Michael Shank Racing and Jackie Heinrecker to bring a female driver into the IndyCar series. My understanding is that uh, this potential program would uh, would fill out some of the races in the 06 car, which is currently held by Elio Castroneves for, I think, about six races for next year. And if this program were to come to pass, this would also include a third Indy 500 entry for this female driver on the Meyer Shank racing team. Again, it's early stages, it's a rumor, but it sounds like something that's plausible considering that Heinrecker and Shank have worked together before on sports car programs, and uh, Heinrecker seems pretty gung-ho on getting a female driver back into IndyCar racing. The third Aero McLaren SP car has been one that we've talked about quite a bit, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be anywhere near a full-time car for next year. But an interesting front runner for this potential uh, seat has uh, kind of come into fruition. Uh, apparently, they're looking at Santino Ferrucci, who may not be a full-time IndyCar driver next year. There was a report in Racer.com uh, yesterday that he's looking at joining Brett Moffitt's Xfinity Series NASCAR team for 20 races next year, and that would seem to indicate that he's not going to be a full-time IndyCar driver next year. But again, apparently... He's on Aero McLaren SP's radar as a third driver for the Indy 500, and that could be a very sneaky combination, a very sneaky fast combination, because Santino finished fourth in the Indy 500 last year. And finally, this was the rumor that really blew my socks off when I heard it. I didn't believe it when I first heard it, but my source who told me this, I trust quite a bit, so I'll go ahead and throw this nugget out there. My understanding, while I personally believed up until I heard this that Team Penske was locked in at four cars for the full season and there was really nothing that was going to change that. My understanding is that Team Penske has begun to make preparations to enter a fifth car in the Indianapolis 500. Now again, I, I don't know who the driver could be. I don't know who the sponsor could be. I don't know who Roger Penske would tap to uh, be entered in a fifth car but apparently they've begun the prep work to stage such an entry. So this is going to be something that we may be wanting to take a look at as things go on. Uh, certainly I'll continue to dig and try to get more details on this as naturally uh, with a Team Penske entry, things are pretty under lock and key. But if all of this stuff begins to come to pass with the Indy 500, I would expect that the Indy 500 entry list could be as high as the high 30s. I don't think they're going to quite get to the 40 mark, but at a point where I was wondering if 38 was maybe the absolute max, we may be looking at a 38 car entry list, which would be uh, absolutely spectacular considering the circumstances otherwise. All right, enough talk about part-timers and the Indy 500. Let's talk about what has been confirmed since we spoke last on the IndyCar Silly Season. Just announced today, while it's no surprise that Colton Herta will be driving for Andretti Autosport next year, uh, it was not necessarily a surprise, but it was a, a move nonetheless that he will be moving over to the number 26 Gainbridge 
Honda for next year. That, of course, was the car that was vacated by Zach Veach, run for the last couple of races by James Hinchcliffe. Uh, and apparently this is something that Michael Andretti has wanted for quite a bit. He, in fact, uh, tried to orchestrate a trade as soon as Colton Herta was, uh, was signed to the Andretti uh, Harding Steinbrenner team, uh, tried to move uh, Veach to the 88 car and, and move Herta to the 26. Uh, Veach ended up telling him to go pound sand, probably rightly so, but uh, this is something that Michael Andretti's wanted for a while, so it doesn't surprise me that he finally had all the pieces in place to make it happen. There have been a lot of people who have speculated that this means bad things for James Hinchcliffe. No. Uh, solid no on that one. Again, my sources are pretty good here. James Hinchcliffe is absolutely signed with Andretti Autosport for next year. Uh, and this only really confirms that uh, GameBridge will not be the sponsor. I would bet you dollars to donuts. He will be confirmed fairly shortly at Andretti Autosport, likely with Genesis sponsorship, which was his sponsor last year. Now, whether he's associated with the Harding Steinbrenner organization that Colton Herta vacated, uh, we'll have to wait and see. So that could mean the car number could be 88. Maybe they'll change it to 29. Who knows? The point is, James Hinchcliffe, absolutely going to be on Andretti Autosport next year. And uh, just for uh, uh, completionist's sake, Ryan Hunter Race still hasn't been officially confirmed at the team yet. Though that seems like uh, almost, again, an almost certainty. So Andretti Autosport, lock it in, five cars. Uh, Herda, Hinch, Ryan Hunter Ray, Rossi, and Marco Andretti. And Ganassi, which we have to talk about real quick because obviously we already know all of the, uh, the major pieces there with uh, Scott Dixon, Alex Pillow, Marcus Erickson, uh, uh, and also uh, Jimmy Johnson. I think I said Marcus Erickson twice. <laughs> He's just that important. But we know who is going to be driving the ovals for Ganassi Racing in the Jimmy Johnson seat. The number 48 will be filled by Tony Kanaan for the next two years with NTT Data and Bryant Heating and Cooling Sponsorship, which is interesting because there has been, well, speculation from the horse's mouth itself. Uh, Jimmy Johnson has expressed interest in running oval tracks particularly the Indianapolis 500 in the future, but has said multiple times that he needs to test on them before he has any kind of a sense of whether he would run ovals at all. So certainly with Kanan jumping on for two years, you would begin to think that the Jimmy Johnson running ovals in IndyCar possibility is, is shrinking quite a bit, but uh, it's good at least that Kanan will be on this team and have a good ride for what might be the final two years of his career. And now we get into the unconfirmed territory and this is where things get really interesting because there's a lot of seats on the uh, on the back end of the grid, uh, no offense to these teams, but obviously they, they are not teams that typically win races, but that hasn't stopped the interest level in drivers trying to get these seats. We'll talk about AJ Foyt Racing first because certainly I think this one is uh, extremely interesting for a lot of reasons. We'll talk about the, the slightly less interesting uh, possibility here. Apparently they are looking at potentially running as many as three cars next year full time. Sebastian Bourdais obviously already confirmed, but the interesting one, or the, the, the less interesting one, and no offense to Dalton Kellett, but it seems like Dalton Kellett will return to the team for next year, uh, you would assume that that would be a full-time ride. Uh, but if you think about it for this year, he ran on a partial season basis and did not run full-time. So my question would be, is there the funding for Dalton Kellett to run the entire season? Uh, maybe there is, because of course, Sebastian Bourdais won the leader circle money at St. Pete. So maybe Foyt will be able to run three cars. The second one, or the the second of or the third of, of three cars i guess you could say is probably the most interesting and this was reported originally by racer.com several other outlets picked it up eventually is that apparently the front runner for the second seat or the third seat at, at uh, aj foyt racing is roman grosjean who would be coming over from formula one and apparently he's he's the front runner for this seat now a lot of people have been talking about grosjean and indycar and that possibility being much less now that he's had that, that horrible death-defying accident at Bahrain. 
but I think you really need to listen to Grosjean's own words because a lot of people have claimed that he's done with racing or certainly wouldn't consider IndyCar. That's not what he's saying. Here's what Roman Grosjean actually said on his personal Twitter. Hopefully I will uh, know work on, on what's coming next. Where am I gonna go racing? Where I'm gonna go winning race? Of course, the knock-on effect from Grosjean potentially going to Foyt is that Charlie Kimball looks like he's on the outside looking in, at least as far as that team is concerned. And that's where we pick up Dale Coyne Racing. Apparently, according to Racer.com again, they're doing some great reporting in terms of the off-season uh, moves. Apparently, Kimball's looking at Dale Coyne Racing. And as we know, uh, it seems like Santino Ferrucci will not return to that team. So there's at least two seats available at Dale Coyne Racing. Let's assume for a second that maybe Charlie Kimball goes to another team that we'll talk about later. You have two seats there. Well, we do know that Rick Ware Racing, and this is now pretty much confirmed. It, it hasn't come from Rick Ware Racing, but a lot of people have been saying it, and, and people have confirmed it personally to me, that Rick Ware Racing has loaned a car from Dale Coyne, and they are fishing for sponsorship for that car. So if Rick Ware Racing can come up with some sponsorship, there's potential that they could be the second Dale Coyne car on the grid, uh, running some sort of a partnership, uh, Dale Coyne Racing with Rick Ware Racing, maybe uh, with, with James Davison as the driver or maybe somebody else. Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, Racer has also uh, put forth, and I think a few other outlets as well, that uh, Pietro Fittipaldi, could possibly return to the team, moving over from the Haas F1 team, so potentially two Haas F1 drivers uh, being in the series at this point. And, and Pietro Fittipaldi, I think, is a, a very talented driver. Uh, I don't think he's really had the opportunity to show what he's made of. I think his Formula One debut, while it wasn't uh, super, super impressive, I think, given the circumstance, it was. So if he does end up returning to IndyCar this year, with Dale Coyne Racing, a team that's already worked with him, that would be an exciting possibility. Ed Carpenter Racing, this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's pretty much a matter of, does Connor Daly have the Air Force funding? And if he does, he will almost certainly be the road course driver in the third Indy 500 car at Ed Carpenter Racing. Uh, spinning off of the, of the Connor Daly uh, point, Carlin Racing. You would assume that Connor Daly will pick up his role with uh, Max Chilton running the non-8500 ovals with that team. And then we get to the second car at Carlin Racing. And again, we start talking about Charlie Kimball. If Kimball doesn't go to coin, let's you know speculate and say Pietro Fittipaldi and James Davison are the two drivers at Dale Coin Racing. Well, Charlie Kimball could jump into the second Carlin Racing car, number 31 or 23 or whatever Charlie would end up going with. I do think that between the two teams, Coyne and Carlin, I think maybe the better fit would be Carlin for Charlie Kimball. He's worked with them before. He's gone fast with them before. Uh, and assuming that there weren't a lot of burned bridges when Kimball left there uh, it, at the end of 2019, uh, you maybe would be able to assume that he could go back into that team with the necessary funding. And if Kimball doesn't have the funding, or maybe doesn't have the funding for a full season, there have been other drivers talked about as potentially heading to Carlin, like Felipe Nazar, who was supposed to run a second Carlin car throughout the 2020 season. And of course, uh, COVID-19 kind of shut that down, unfortunately, for this year. But Felipe Nazar is another driver who's expressed interest in running Indy cars. And so you would assume that his... Uh, path of least resistance to get to IndyCar racing would be with Carlin because they almost got that deal done uh, this year and he was able to test with them. He was in St. Pete ready to go, but of course we know what happened there. So that seems to be where things are right now in terms of the IndyCar silly season. Uh, we will continue to update this as things go along. I think there's some really interesting possibilities. I think we could have a really awesome grid full-time, and certainly the Indy 500 looks like it's going to be freaking awesome uh, with a lot of interesting entries and, and cars and drivers showing up at that race. Uh, so we'll have to see how this all works out. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more IndyCar and Motorsport content, and I will see you in the next video.